For these pair of pants, we got them thrifting. And if you've noticed, one of my tips is, especially for kids that are in between sizes, is to maybe move up into adult sizing and just alter where they need alterations. So for this pair, the waist is too big and I'm just going to pin it to fit. There are several options for the waist of pants. Sometimes you can take in the side seams, which I'm gonna show in a different video. But for this pair, I'm choosing to take in directly from the, the back seam. This will put the pockets closer together than normal. If you see in the finished product, the back pockets are closer together. So in order to start the alteration, I measure how much um, I'm actually going to be taking in. And then after I have that measurement, I know that I'm just going to be tapering it down through towards the, like, the base of the crotch seam. But you're going to have to take your seam rubber and first take off the belt loops. And this can be a little bit challenging because there is um, obviously a lot of stitching but just be patient and take your time. So fully take off that center back belt loop so that you can access the seam and then set it aside because later on you are going to want to reattach that belt loop. So once that belt root loop is completely removed, which is just about there, then um, go ahead and start taking apart the waist. So first I'm just finishing up this belt loop. There we go. And setting it aside. And so then you can see the pin that was in my the waist. I typically start at that seam that's connecting the waistband to the pants and um, just dig in your seam rubber wherever you see a spot or you feel like you can really get in there and start cutting away. Now for this project, you also could use um, a razor, a sewing razor um, to carefully cut those threads. It might go a little bit faster than the seam rubber that I have. So it is the, just this slow, steady process of just seam ripping out. I always say that when you're, altering, when you're altering, you do have to learn to make friends with your seam ripper because a lot of it is taking out the seams so that you can access them and get to the new seam. As I'm finishing up taking out this seam, you'll notice that I actually had to separate the waist seam and then just make sure that all of my excess threads are trimmed off because they will get in the way of new stitching. So just pull out all those little threads that might be left in the seam and just be sure to clean up all of those edges and um, open that waistband wide enough for the alteration that I'm going to need. After I'm done taking the waistband apart, now I'm ready to work on that center back seam. And as you can see, I'm just removing those pins that I put in place and I didn't remeasure, but I do do this a lot. And so I do have an eye for how much, um, how many inches or centimeters need to be taken out. Now I just start from the back side to begin to pluck away at those threads. You notice the center back seam, there are those two rows of double stitching. So this is all thread that you're gonna want to pull out. Sometimes you can pluck it just right to get the thread to kind of um, pull out all the way down, but that isn't always the case. And so you just keep um, plucking away with the seam ripper until you get it. And I want to take that seam out all the way down to where the seam is going to taper in. So really almost the entire length of that back center seam for this pair of pants. Once I have the stitches taken out, then I just turn the pants back over and pull all of the loose thread from the front side and make sure to get all of that out of the seam. 
because again, I don't want it to get tangled up in the new seam and just pluck out all of those little pieces of thread that are still stuck there. Then I'm going to go ahead and turn the pants back inside out and really try and lay that seam out flat so that I can measure again how much I want it to be taken in. Now, as I mentioned before, I am getting close to the pockets, so that is going to make the pockets on these pants um, closer together than usual, but all things considered for thrifting and repurposing clothing, or I should say um, looking at it from both the sustainability and the frugal standpoint, being able to have a pair of jeans that my tween daughter can use that she likes that we found at a thrift store and just needed some alterations. Um, we are not going to worry about having the pockets too close together. And if she's happy, I'm happy. So once I have my pins in place, I'm just going to go and make that line with Taylor's chalk. This is going to be my stitch line. For this pair of pants, I also noticed that the tag is going to be in the way of the seam, creating extra bulk. So when I want to go alter that waistband and take it in, I don't need the tag in the seam. So it's easier to just seam rip the tag out, even though it means I don't know what brand these pants are anymore. But that will just cause too much bulk and make it uncomfortable to wear the pants. Then I'm ready to take these over to the machine. Now, if you notice, I am using this vintage Singer, which was such a pleasure to use, and I was so impressed with how well it did um, on the bulk of jeans. So I started at the base of the crotch, and then worked my way toward the top of the waistband. And just went ahead and followed that Taylor's chalk. So I'm going right along that line of Taylor's chalk, using that as my stitch line. As I get up towards the top of the pants, you'll notice there is this added seam that is extra thick. So most jeans have that. And in this machine, it really did quite well going over that. But if you have a home machine that has trouble going over a seam that is that thick, just go slowly and kind of help it over. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start working on the waistband. And for the waistband, I do measure using a ruler how much alteration I need. And I really wanna be quite precise about this because both sides of the waistband need to be exactly the same amount that's taken in so that they will match when the alteration is finished. And take that right over to the machine and stitch up the waistband using those um, pin markers. And of course, you don't want to run over your pins. So take, put the needle down, take the pin out, and then you can start stitching. Or whatever method that you have found most useful in your sewing experience as far as just making sure to take the pins out before sewing. Once the sewing is done, then I go ahead and just cut off my excess fabric, leaving a bit of seam allowance because of course I don't want to tr trim it too small or else the seam will come out. And then that seam that I've created in the waist, I'm trying to lay it super flat and fold it back together. This does take a little bit of work. So don't stress about it and just try your best. But it is better if you, the flatter you get it because then the more comfortable it will be and the um, least noticeable it will be if it does lay flat. And you also want to cut away the extra fabric from the crotch seam. If you have a serger, you can serge this edge so that 
it doesn't unravel. But I did not go put the double back seam in place as was originally noted in the G. Once everything is trimmed and the waist is able to be reattached to the pants, I'm going to go ahead and stitch that belt loop in as I'm stitching the baseband along. Again, remember you're working with multiple layers of fabric and rather than um, worry about them shifting, just continue to go slow. Place the belt loop in there as you get there because you're never going to be able to hold it in with a pin. At least that's my experience because it is just too thick. So just move along slowly, making sure that there are no um, bumps or ripples along the pressure foot as you are stitching along. It is worth noting that at the time of this alteration, we were actually on vacation, so I didn't have a lot of colors of thread with me. Instead, I just relied on black. Typically, if I was doing this job for someone else or if I was home with my stash of thread, I would probably try to match that color of top stitching thread that is in these jeans. But again, if my daughter is the attended wearer and she doesn't care about the matching thread color, then I have to realize that neither do I. That might be the best way to do it is with matching thread, but if she is happy with the result and gets what she wants, then I am absolutely fine with that. Once you've put that waistband back together again and reattached the belt loop, the alteration is finished. Again, I did not go and redo the top stitching along the center back seam, but truly these look like a job well done and my daughter was quite pleased with them. Thank you for watching. You can shop tutorials and classes on my website naomifeda.net. Be sure to like and subscribe and as always may God sow his love into your heart today.